Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin and Altcoin Trading Talk, number 26. I'm Rob Borden from Coinigy, and uh, obviously your usual host is uh, William Kale, but he is um, vacationing in the Dominican Republic this week, so I'm taking over the duties, and uh, with us we also have Brian Beamish from TRI, as usual, the rationalinvestor.co. And also, how are you doing, Brian? <laughs> Can't complain. Sad Good. moving lessons when I do. <laughs> <laughs> also uh, with us, as usual lately, is Alex Sturk from Block Talk. How are you doing, Alex? Fantastic. Uh, I wish I was uh, sipping daiquiris with the Chico Benitas as well, but uh, I'm here with the snow in uh, eastern Canada. Yeah, it's a great yeah. time. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, William's having a good time. I haven't heard a whole lot from him, and that's a good thing because I think he needed a little bit of a disconnect. So, what? Um, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, what was I going to ask? Oh yeah, what's the weather like in Wisconsin? Oh, uh, the weather in Wisconsin's been pretty dreary, to be honest. I'd say like low uh, you're not getting mid 30s to mid 40s and rainy basically for the last 10 days. You're not getting the snow Alex getting, eh? Fortunately, it's been too warm for snow, but well, it's man. been raining the whole time. Well, so, what do they say? Uh, April, April showers, showers bring, right? Yeah, April showers bring May flowers, right? Yeah, you oh. got it. But I'm just showing <laughs> my age with that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, maybe a little bit. So, who wants to be quarterback tonight now that our uh, our regular quarterback is out? Got a whole bunch of fun stuff to talk about. Uh, who wants to take charge here? Alex, you feel like uh, well, leading our charge here? Yeah, sure. Well, geez, we got so much of a response on um, on the tweet now on um, people wanting coins reviews. <laughs> like, there's, there's still stuff, I guess, that needs to uh, show some upside, and then there's a lot of stuff that's kind of at, like, a bouncing place. So, it's, it's great to see uh, lots of interest in the show, and... Uh, yeah, lots of um, interaction. So I'm I'm happy to, to I guess uh, run this deal. Um, I guess first thing that is kind of happened today that everyone wants to talk about is uh, Lisk, uh, which is this ICO that was uh, done I think last month, and uh, they raised I believe it was like fifteen thousand bitcoins, which is pretty substantial. Um, for it's a, a little tie-in with Ethereum. So, like um, Ethereum is like these smart contracts that uh, um, you you basically use ETH to power like code in the uh, executed in a blockchain. So, what Lisp is is kind of like an extra layer onto that that's supposed to be cheaper and more efficient in JavaScript. So, for anyone who's not technical, like JavaScript is like probably one of the fundamental languages of the internet. Like, it's becoming, like, the standard of what everything's programmed in. Uh, I imagine a good chunk of co uh, Coinigy is probably uh, programmed in uh, uh, JavaScript. Oh, yeah, definitely. Most of the front end and, you know, probably half of the back end. So, so yeah, like, the, the technicals of the project sound pretty cool. And... Um, but I think like a lot of people started feeling buyer's uh, remorse after a lot of like information started surfacing about the team. So it's only two guys. Um, so put the the contrast in how much they raised. Um, uh, like Ethereum um, raised about twenty thousand bitcoins. I think it was one bitcoin was about eight hundred dollars. So these guys raising fifteen thousand bitcoins. One um, um, bitcoin was like four hundred dollars. Is pretty high up there considering it's just a two-man team mm -hmm. and uh, the one guy doesn't really have a technical background and the other guy has been an IT <laughs> manager for a bicycle shop for like the last 10 years so I think they're a tad overvaluated and I think uh, a lot of this um, buzz for ICO is probably going to end with this project. We'll see. They, they also actually had a, their own currency before. Um, I forget the ticker. I think it's like XCT or something. Um, but like there are some actual, like the surrounding the crowd sale, there's already some um, uh, some worrying behavior because apparently BTCE, the exchange, sent funds from their cold wallet to this ICO. 
uh, to be part of it. So they sent other people's money. Um, I guess the team like noticed it and they actually like denied it. So already like there, there's such controversy around this project. It's hilarious. Are, are the developers from Eastern Europe? Uh, yeah, I think they're from what is it, Romania? Uh, I believe that is. Because that's so, sort of BTC land, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. somewhere. Mm. Well, I have on the chart here, I don't know whether people can see, but um, a question I had for you about this list was, do you remember uh, the uh, Ethereum did uh, their ICO, and there was a long hold period, and there were like little derivatives that started trading off of that. Do you remember the one? There was one in particular, and I can't remember the name of it, but I think it started with an E as well. Yeah, yeah it was called Ethercoin. And yeah, was, I think I remember. Cool. It was actually, you know, just when I actually first got to know you a year or so ago, um, that uh, that this was out, and it was trading away, trade, 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 trade. Well, Ethereum was still theoretically locked up, right? So, um, you know, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the list coins, this ICO financing kind of thing, they're still locked up, right? Yeah, but I think the main difference here is the scope of the project and the timeline. Like, Ethereum was already going to be, like, a year out, so this guy who essentially made his Ethereum tradable, he, um, he actually created a blockchain and a token, and uh, he, he signed uh, his address to prove that he actually had the Ethereum. So this, what we're seeing from li um, uh, what the exchanges, Yolobit, is probably not in the same realm of uh, what you want to be buying. Because um, a lot of the guys I know that trade on Yolobit, they hold their breath whenever they try and withdraw. And it's like a slight sigh of relief when it actually processes, like, this is the type of exchange that has like an ICO every week or almost every day it seems now and a lot of them don't even have like uh, um, uh, blockchains or even like a, um, uh, an announcement thread on uh, Bitcoin talk. So oh, that's interesting. So, because so, uh, I remember this yo bit here, it was kind of the rage about two or three months ago. Um, it might have been longer. <laughs> like six months ago when it started up. Everybody was like, oh, Yobit, Yobit, what's this, what's this? Wait, what's your general feeling about this Yobit exchange? Are you not impressed with them? Not at all. Like, I don't think I've ever sent coins there before, and I don't uh, advise anyone to send coins there. And actually, with this whole thing that's going on, they sent an email to everyone uh, on their exchange that this uh, list is being listed. Yeah, so, I got the email. I posted it in the chat room this morning. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> like, that seems kind of like almost Gox-like behavior or like this is probably they're going to be disappear in the next month with a lot of fun. It's like this is a, kind of a, a cash grab sort of thing. So yeah. th this is my like statement to everyone. Like, it's more of my opinion, but it's like do not send your funds to Yolo, Yolo Bit. Do not participate yeah. in this market. All right, well, that's pretty bold. So uh, that's interesting. And I, you know, anybody, like, obviously, Yo Yobit, uh, y Yellow Bit, is that the actual name of it? Yellow Bit? <laughs> uh, it's YOLO, like, uh, you only YOLO. live once. I think it's really Yobit. Yobit. All right. Like, whatever but, the hell their name is. Obviously. Everybody's calling it Yolo Bit because it's okay. a ripoff, um, potentially. They're going to be watching the show. You know, we seem to have a pretty growing audience. So, you know, I would uh, I would challenge whoever, you know, somebody from Yellow Bit, if you at the very least, if you want to come on the Twitter feed and talk to us about your motivation. Why are you doing this? And is this like a cash grab like Alex is a, is a bit afraid of here? Or is this like a purposeful marketing campaign that they're just simply trying to make a splash in the crypto market? And frankly, I think they made a hell of a splash today. <laughs> if you didn't know about Yellow Bit or, and you were interested in crypto, uh, you know, before, you sure know about it now. <laughs> so it was all the rage. Uh, we had guys in the chat room yeah. popping off great trades on this thing. You know, me personally, um, you know, you know my my bent. I'm going to play more defense than aggressive offense. So, you know, I really can't get involved in this, and I can't recommend people do this. So, like, I've got a three-minute chart up here. But, wow, it was a hell of a move. I mean, out of the gate there, that was a, what? We're right now, we're sitting at about a seven, eight-fold move on the day here. 
Uh, could you gotten filled in size? I don't know. But it sure made from some wild fireworks. And like I said, I got some boys in the room tonight who are banging off trades, and they're happy campers. <laughs> so traders got to trade. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. They have a tweet on one of their tweets that's on their site here. It says, we bought some amount of coins on ICO, and now it's available for trade. Yeah. <laughs> that seems kind of weird. But I don't know. Is that, Is that, I think that unusual for the exchange to, like, acquire a huge hoard of coins and then just sell them, basically? Um, well, that's what Bitfinex does. I mean, Bitfinex. I guess it's kind of basically market making, but Bitfinex, Bitfinex doesn't do it with a coin that's never been listed on any site before. And yeah, exactly. Nobody knows the devs or what it's about or anything. It definitely seems a little bit suspicious. Anyway, it, was, it sure made for an interesting day, I'll tell you that much. And it kind of, what I actually found is that it was, I almost, for whatever it's worth, my sort of impression was I think a lot of people were sort of obsessed with watching Ethereum sort of melting down here. And in a sort of a way, this almost distracted. It almost like stopped that focus. And I noticed that Ethereum started to perk up here. And some of the others, like uh, there was, I think, Feathercoin there's the, or FTC. I don't know whether I got that right or not. Uh, I don't think I did. Um, it was it was a recent rallier and it sort of backed off and I noticed uh, a lot of bids coming in and I was sort of talking about that in my daily video to my members is that I I kind of felt like there was some sort of catalyst something happened to, today around this risk list and it it sort of changed the tone of the market a little bit anyway um, it would make for some interesting fireworks and anybody in the audience if you have any questions you know uh, feel free to post them or comments uh, and like I said if there are list people out there in the audience you know we'd love to hear from you I'd be really curious to get your take on this I think anyone that bought the uh, the ICO is probably ecstatic right now because at current prices it's uh, like 56 times the ICO value like that's quite a large percentage of uh, price discovery right Right, and, and and I think if I'm not mistaken, like there's there's quite a there's like a twenty or thirty day window until these coins become available, right? Um yeah, they're saying by the end of um April the network's probably gonna go live and the other people will start trading. And like so just um This is kind of like an artificial market right now. Yeah, and it's not like uh by all means it's it's not like uh this is the first time this happened, like we talked about earlier, Ethercoin and uh there's actually uh rep is trading on Gatecoin, um, uh, the Gatecoin exchange. Um, uh, so that's Augur's um, token, and it's trading, I think, at like 30 times ICO value right now. But the thing is, it's it's kind of trading in a vacuum, and the people who uh, are market making it, they're basically able to pull the price up as much as they want. Like I, I've defined these as like rise-only markets. Like Ethercoin, I think, was around for so long that it was able to have a decent bit of price discovery um, and it, it represented it very well but like these ICOs that are, are these um, tokens that are a promise of payout um, of like the actual tokens I don't think they're around long enough to give a real good gauge on it especially yep. LISC like REP yep. is probably trading a little more around actual price but yeah, yeah I can understand um, that and, it, and it's totally a caveat emptor you, if you're going to get into this game, you better know what the hell you're doing. All right. Yep, well, but, uh, I, yeah, I, again, I'll, I'll say avoid your bit, but, <laughs> again, my opinion as a seasoned <laughs> trader and uh, as someone who's, I guess, connected to a lot of guys who've traded before, or uh, trade a lot. But, Man, um, we gotta create a crypto dead exchange list, you know, or a crypto negative exchange list, because man, there. I mean, I would imagine there's some people out there that go, "I heard of this place, Cripsy. Should I go and put my coins there?" <laughs> Do they are they even still alive anymore? I don't know. No, not really. <laughs> I think there's a class action lawsuit forming, oh, um, or already in court. I'm not sure. You know, already filed possibly, but. Um, you know, I think that they pretty much big burn uh, ran off with the money and or it was stolen basically and how's uh, Alex you talk to him I think he's in active in your uh, chat room uh, your chat channel um, uh, a, a bit uh, 
How's uh, Bitterix Bill doing through all of these, uh, you know, polo margin and stuff? How are things going over on Bitterix? Uh, they haven't been adding too many new coins. Like, I know they asked, added one that I think a lot of people are overly critical of. But, um, yeah, they're, they're doing a lot more improvements on the back end. I think much like Coinigy is doing, the front end all looks the same, but they're kind of, like, moving everything around on the back end to make it far more efficient and trade faster. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, I don't know, like... Not too pleased with Betrex right now. I think um, their their mobile platform is kind of shitty, for lack of a better term, and uh, their market isn't any faster. If anything, it's been slowing down a bit for execution times. Um, I know they do have some new coins being launched in the next month that are going to be like new to market, and uh, just from the discussion today about this whole list thing, maybe they're going to list some... Um, ICO, IOUs, who knows? I think they, Bill said he was going to talk with his legal team to see what they could do um, mm. to actually have, like, users' funds be tradable. Mm. Um, so, like yeah, it's kind I like to get the pulse of how these exchanges are, and I think you're probably the best person to know that. So. Yeah. Well, they're definitely raking in decent money now with uh, all the fees generated from all the volume just from Ether. Like, Ether yeah. probably earned them probably... Grand in the last couple of months, <laughs> just in fees. So it's, yeah. it's substantial. I will say that we, for the first time, we've <clears throat> experienced some like connectivity issues and downtime with their API, which is unusual in the last couple of years. Just up until the last, you know, maybe two months, it's happened a couple of times. So I don't know yeah, what's up with that. It's, it just seems to be their trading thing, because like, uh, I'll, I'll always say that Bittrex is the best web wall I've ever used, because their withdrawals and deposits are like bang on, like fast every time. Like You get the email, it goes out right away. Like I've, I've sent payments from Bittrex pretty quickly. So that end of it's working fine, but I think, yeah, their market um, APIs, are, they're tinkering a bit, and it's not looking any better better. Hopefully it's just going to have like a day where everything just like snaps back right and it's like faster than we've ever seen before. No, we're still hoping that they will provide a real-time API because we still can't get real-time trade data or order data from them and they are one of the very few exchanges, definitely the largest exchange that doesn't offer those features at this time. So hoping that that's going to come out soon. I know they have it on their own site, but they don't make it available to anybody else, so it's a little hmm. frustrating still. Bill, if you're watching this, you know what the traders want, and you have to give it to them. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's uh, go on to, I think, our next topic here, uh, which is Bitcoin and this article yeah. that was released by the International Business Times. Um, Craig Wright reportedly set to prove he is the Bitcoin creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that. No one can say it's not true, I guess, until it's disproven and he tries to lay out some evidence. But obviously, we've been through this dog and pony show one time already. Any idea what would motivate him to do something like that? Like, why would he want to do that? I don't understand why. What would motivate him? Who, who, what motivates Besides this guy? Besides being the creator? Him? I mean, if, if you were the creator of Bitcoin and you had remained anonymous until this point, would you really want to out yeah. yourself? What would be the what would be the big benefit of coming out right now? I just I don't under I, I don't understand what the and if he isn't, what on earth would would motive to motivate himself to do this to his own sort of name? It's, I mean, the only thing I can think of is trying to get to a position where he could move coins from his old addresses and actually cash out a little bit without people freaking out. That, I mean, that's the only, thing I, only benefit I could think of, you know, and I know that when this first was in the news, how long ago was that now? Maybe like nine months ago or something? Didn't this guy already say that he was the creator of Bitcoin once, and then after a couple of days he just, like, disappeared? Well, it was uh, the Wired article um, surfaced shortly after he did a um, he showed oh, yeah. a Bitcoin conference in Vegas. He he phoned into it, which the whole thing, if you watch it, it's like okay, it's obvious that he's pretending to 
be Satoshi but not saying it. Like, he's kind of, oh, yeah, you know, I've been in the space of a long time, very long time. I keep my head down, though. I don't, I don't, I don't say too much. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it, like, pretty funny stuff. Um, Rob, I might interject here for a sec. I think you've had the camera on me the entire show here. Uh, it says you are presenting to everyone on my show. I don't know. Maybe you can show Brian's screen if that's possible. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the whole like time, it. but it's been since we finished that last segment, yeah. yeah. So you can see the the wonderful photo of Craig right there. He looks so happy. But um, So there, there's two ways, like, even Wired even mentioned this in their articles. Like, he's either um, doing one of the most elaborate hoaxes we've ever seen in this space, or he is Satoshi Nakamoto. And the reason why this was all kind of disproven was a lot of the evidence, people, like emails that said he was like talking about um, PGP keys, like um, which are like digital signatures that are in a database. Um, so uh, MIT has this database of like signatures, so people can say like this, me writing this. Um, the same way you can sign a Bitcoin address, you can sign in. Um, an email to say it's yours or it was you. So people have two different copies of this database. The one at MIT says that he sent these emails back in like 2009 saying that would prove that he is Satoshi. But then there's other people like that are in the crypto space that kind of have their uh, their own copy of the database from that time. They're like, um, it's not in mine. It looks like somebody like amended the database. Like they put in that, that signature at that point in time. So uh, it, it's that's kind of disproven a lot of the emails that were originally to say uh, he is Satoshi. Hmm. Um, and then there's this whole, um, he is a supercomputer. Like, he has the largest privately owned supercomputer, but a lot of people are saying, it's like, I don't think he even has that. Like, maybe that's why he's pretending to be Satoshi. Like, he's getting funding for whatever projects he says he's doing, and he was, like, quietly telling people he was Satoshi, and now, like, Wired discovered that he was doing that. So it's like, okay, he's either a big hoaxer or he actually is Satoshi. So is Satoshi, basically the most conclusive way he can prove it is he can sign one of the first Bitcoin um, blocks, like the what they were mined, um, right. to say that he owns them. Like, like, if he can say that he owns the Genesis block reward, the 50 bitcoins, the very first 50 bitcoins that were created, then yeah. he is Satoshi. It's as simple as that. But if you can't do that, then probably isn't. Probably not. Just mean for the because if he really wants to prove it, then he'd be able to do that. So, but what yeah. again? What what would be the motivation? Like I, my hunch is, for whatever it's worth, like a trader sort of skeptical insight. Is he's tr this guy's trying to inject in uncertainty into the price and drive it down so that he can buy more at a lower price. That that's my hunch here. That's what I think is going on. Um, it yeah, just it makes sense why this guy. Why would he come out now of all times? But anyway, only time will tell, right? We will see. The only thing has got to be to cash out. If he's Satoshi, then he's doing this so that he can cash out. That's the only thing that would make sense because but it's not going to be positive for Bitcoin's price if he is proven to be the creator, I don't think. I, I don't think, at least short term, anybody coming being proven to be the creator of Bitcoin would be positive for the, the price. Well, and that's just it, is that I actually had a few people in my chat room which surprised me. They were like, well, if this guy actually is Nakamoto, then, yeah, that's actually going to be bearish. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. Well, so, and so then it's going to be everything that he has in his background is and past is going to become Bitcoin's background and past by association. Uh -huh. And that he's going to have to, it'll wash out eventually, I'm sure, but in the short term, it'll probably be hard on Bitcoin. Well, and then there's also a million coins that would be potential to come on the market because Satoshi theoretically owns like 1.2 million coins from yeah. the time he started mining. Huge flood of supply too, if that's the case. And yeah, that would definitely have further impact. Hmm. So part of the bulk paperwork that was 
surfaced back when this story first started was a, a trust fund that apparently these 1.2 million coins is allowed to move them until 2020. And um, they're only allowed to be spent on Bitcoin development. So maybe that means like, oh, Bitcoin's going to get a shitload of funding soon. Um, we don't have to worry about um, the inflation of these 1.2 million coins until 2020. It, it just comes down to this point is like he either is Satoshi or he is a poster of a, a bunch of fraudulent documents. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> what, I don't know. Like, well, why do people do these crazy things? And, and since this is unregulated. Why does your bit list. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think this all comes down to money, right? And since Bitcoin is unregulated. You can go out and make these fraudulent claims, and there's no legal repercussions for any of this, but he could dr dramatically manipulate the price. So, I wonder. Anyway, it was an interesting yeah. conversation. So Let's we take a look at the market so, and see yeah. how, how you think this is going to play into what you're seeing on the charts, Brian. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, that's probably a good segue. So let's uh, jump into some uh, TA here and uh, see where we go. So... Um, you know, we've had a number of requests over the past couple of weeks uh, to take a good look at Bitcoin because the uh, trading range is uh, really con uh, condensed here. So I thought, uh, you know, I'd actually, you know, like really step back and take a really critical look. Uh, here, I'm just trying to put something down. Hold on a second. Mm, take a real critical look at Bitcoin from a higher time frame, frame perspective and you know, I encourage uh, people, uh, if, you, if you're kind of unsure of what's going on in the shorter term and you need some perspective, I, I always encourage people, when in doubt, zoom out. Um, so what I've done here is I've actually pulled up a weekly price chart of Bitcoin on uh, Bitstamp. Um, and and just done some simple analysis. A lot of the tools that you see here, I basically use on a daily basis. The interesting thing, ironically enough, is a lot of these charts. Hopefully, the viewers go, "Well, I've seen that. I, yeah, I've seen all of those kind of. Yeah, I've seen them do that before." I mean, hopefully, you see the same thing over and over again. Um, and really, uh, I, I have actually in the past like tweeted out charts of you know this altcoin and overlay it with a weekly Bitcoin chart, and you tell me which one it is which. Um, the, when it comes to price action, ironically enough, you know they they actually act very similarly. Um, I think because Bitcoin is sort of like you know the the uh, leading horse here, um, it's uh, it's sort of this stable framework around all of crypto, I think. I don't think uh, if, you know, if Bitcoin falls apart, I have a hard time believing a lot of the altcoins will, uh, will hang in there too long. You know, we saw what happened to Litecoin. I, I don't know whether you guys remember, and back here in 2013 when Bitcoin was doing this, Litecoin was just going nuts. Um, so, and of course we all, you know, seen Litecoin just come right down. So the point that I would just make here is that, you know, for the crypto story to be bullish, you know, I think Bitcoin generally has to be bullish. I personally did see the altcoin market come, come to life again through this transitionary period here that we had on Bitcoin. I think, you know, industry standard wide, um, this, you know, where I have my mouse right now, and you'll notice I have these uh, three little uh, curvy lines here. This was a significant transitionary event uh, for Bitcoin. We could very easily regard, I mean, before uh, Silk Road, uh, you know, uh, well, after Silk Road, after the big run-up, Mt. Gox disaster, China ban, right, the whole thing, um, we ultimately had to correct that big bull market. And the interesting thing, you know, long-time viewers of me will uh, recall I'm a big fan of this, zone between the 61.8 fib and the 78.6 fib and you notice this 78.6 fib just so happens to be right off of that old historic high on Bitcoin. So generally speaking you know I could definitely consider you know actually just simply going and buying um, you know some Bitcoin for like little old lady kind of strategy just uh, blindly and I've done it lots of times um, where I'm just going to risk against the previous low end of the range and look for a test of the high end of the range. 
And as you can see, I mean, I find it fascinating how uh, Bitcoin itself put in this very well-defined trading range through almost the entire year of 2015, right down off of, and does anybody remember what the 78.6, what we call that line? The line in the sand. Very good, Rob. Excellent. So the long and short of it here is you can see how absolutely imperative it was uh, that the bulls recapture that level, and man, there was one hell of a fight. Um, I, you know, I very comfortably believe that the market state from the period of like uh, late 2013 into basically January 2015 was down. It was a bear market, and then I would argue that from. Uh, beginning of January 2015, ironically enough, just up until that November government auction, I would actually argue that the market state of Bitcoin was range. Um, I believe that we're going through a transition here, and it's interesting, my level oneers just wrote their final exam, just some fantastic results from them, uh, really, really great work. And just, you know, one of the questions on the exam, because it is very crypto-oriented, is just simply, can you find any sort of technical evidence of a bull or bear in Bitcoin off of the weekly chart? And, you know, I've been working with uh, you, uh, Rob, long enough. Hopefully, can you see this W that comes in here? Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, that's, that's very telling of the transition of Bitcoin out of, you know, first off, out of the bear, because we just kept getting AM after AM after AM. It was just a nightmare to sideways range market to now, you know, through that November event, um, us actually starting to make higher highs and higher lows. In essence, starting to work our way uh, trending higher, which is very encouraging. I mean, the long and short of it here is I spent a good year or so just watching Bitcoin melt down. And then we spent a year with price just going sideways, exactly where it's supposed to go sideways and sort of clean itself up. Um, we often talk about saucer bottoms. I don't know whether, can you guys see how this looks like a saucer? Yeah, Ooh. definitely. Oh, can I do that? This happens a lot in the marketplace. And this is just, you know, this growth rate was just too far, too fast. And what the yeah. market needed to do was just simply come back to its long-term trend line. You see that here? We should probably even highlight that. You know, and that, the interesting thing is, is that's off that, uh, what is the name of this particular rally? Was there a particular name to this rally in Bitcoin when it jumped up to 250 bucks there? Uh, that I was know, before really. my time. All right. That was when William was telling me about how his $15 Bitcoins were worth 115 Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, this was the Silk Road reversal right there. And if we just simply draw a trend line off of that smack down, off of these lows, that low and the Silk Road low, you notice that basically that's exactly where price had to come back to and put up a hell of a fight, eh? Um, now, what's really interesting about this saucer, right, is uh, I'm a big fan of market symmetry, and I don't know whether you guys can see this or not, but I often, you know, the saucer itself is a symmetrical object. Hopefully you guys can appreciate that. So what we often see is, you know, we just take like a mirror image of this half of the move and overlay it. And while price isn't going to exactly obey this, you'd be surprised how often price does mirror this type of behavior. Um, if I look at, so, you know, in our having event, right, should be right into uh, somewhere in here, right, right up in there. Um, we know, whoops, actually, here, why don't we put that up there. Having events going to be like mid to late July, right, somewhere in there. Um, so we know that the wind's at our back. We also know, too, that uh, seasonally this is a good time for asset appreciation anyway. You know, buy when it snows, sell when it goes. Here's that May. I often see with Bitcoin you get a, uh, a bit of an extension of the seasonal rally. Um, I, you know, I don't know whether this symmetry is going to play out perfectly, but there is some interesting things going on here. Um, if I we just go off of the weekly, see, uh, well, 
So what you're saying, Brian, last show you were talking about all these M's you were seeing. Uh, I guess it was more the one-day chart. And, uh, uh, yeah, now, now, now it looks like you're uh, agreeing with me on my uh, prediction of, like, 2K by uh, the end of the year. Well, 2K, I don't know. Um, I uh, would like to finish this weekly chart, and then we'll drill down to the lower time frames. Uh, you know, I don't know how much time we have, but as okay. I said, I really wanted to do a detailed analysis of this. So uh, we'll finish off with this higher time frame. I'm sorry we'll for interrupting. Yep. Lower time frame. Um, all right, so we have this W working off of the weekly chart, and that's sort of this, you know, this, uh, you know, the white uh, lines that you see here, this low, this high, this low breakout. Uh, we have our trend line here. You can see right now it's giving a level X here about $339 a coin. Um, and we can see that if the market continues its trending pattern higher, I think we can see 502 again. That really wouldn't surprise me. Um, and that would basically take us uh, well uh, on our way higher. Remember that... Uh, uh, symmetry study that I just had on there, um, it kind of projected that we could sort of move up and down uh, our way higher. My hunch is that this, uh, if this is indeed a bull, that this is a pretty reliable target, this 500, and so I've sort of created a, like a dual scenario here. I think uh, at present we have a consolidation in price. And I think a lot of people in the Bitcoin community have been watching this uh, with bated breath, you know, how is this going to play out? Um, if we go off of the 500 whatever high and then this low here, you can kind of see on even on the weekly chart this consolidation. Can you guys see that? Right, this, this sort of compressing of price. So my feeling is, is that whichever way this does resolve, um, this, whatever, whoever wins this battle and exactly where you draw these trend lines, you know, each exchange is slightly different. Um, some exchanges we've gone through the top, others we haven't. You know, I mean, just me changing that there, you can see. Um, actually, here's something I wanted to point out for the audience as well. Um, if your site doesn't have volume profile, you can actually add this indicator. It's the VWMA, and it stands for Volume Weighted Moving Average. Uh, and you can see what I've done here is I've tried to set it to the longest period possible. This is a weekly chart, so this is only like, well, like two and a half years. So what this does, this indicator for people who don't have access to volume profile, is this basically gives you what's called the POC, or the point of control in the market. And what I find really fascinating is that you can see Bitcoin is basically just oscillating right around this point of control. This is a really, really important level. I mean, it's quite remarkable how important it is. Um, that's good to know about that uh, volume weighted moving average because that's definitely something a lot of people ask about and if there's anything we can do to help them get some of that information, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, you guys were thinking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, in maybe incorporating volume profile, maybe not, and, and uh, you know, if people are using Coinergy and they're like, oh, I, I wonder where the POC is. Well, you can use the volume weighted average price indicator, and it's right in the indicator list, and it basically will give you that, that point of control. So that's, that's a handy little tool for our viewers. Great. And uh, by all means, you know, if anybody wants to ask me, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, Twitter me or whatever, and uh, I can help you out with that if you need to. So, Brian, um, if this, let me just ask you, if this does resolve higher, um, like we all, I think, believe it will, do you think that, <laughs> do, do you think that that's overall would, you know, shows some strength in Bitcoin if it tends to behave in the way you would expect a traditional market to behave, like, you know, oil or gold or something like that in terms of, um, you know, it going into this trading range after a period of volatility? and then setting a price floor basically and showing resistance and then turning around, you know, 
Do you think that long term that shows some, you know, positive signs for Bitcoin in general, or would that be really too this, much? This year long consolidation here. Mm -hmm. basically set the new floor for price. Right. I, I find it very hard to believe that we are going to trade below this. And now, especially with the fact that we have the halving event, this level now actually economically won't make sense. Right? Where previously sure. this was the cost of production, with the halving event, this level can't be the cost of production. If it, well, it could be, but that would be on a technology efficiency side rather than a Bitcoin payout side, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we might have the cost of mining uh, go down, but my hunch is, is, and I think, you know, if this guy is Nakamoto, and I have my doubts, but I think if the Nakamoto and, and the team or whoever created Bitcoin, um, if if they designed it the way they wanted to, they basically wanted to build in this idea that price is going to progressively work higher. The interesting thing is, is I don't know whether they took Moore's law into account. Maybe they did, and they're thinking that the offset in the payout will actually equally offset the Moore's law and technology innovation. I don't know. He, he um, actually mentioned that in the white paper, though, like Moore's me? law. Moore's law is mentioned in the white paper, um, at least in terms of... Um, uh, scaling and um, yeah, the the hash rate and everything. I think but, that's what established the floor here, right? I think we we bumped up against the cost of production here, and I think that's basically the market took a year, and I think the miners just basically said, you know what, this is our cost of production, so we, we're not going to let price go down any lower. Mm -hmm. Just well, every holding have, coins. I don't know the mechanics of that. So let's finish off with this story and get to sort of what I'm doing today. Keep in mind, this is a weekly price chart. And if somebody asked me, if some, and this is important, if somebody asked me and Kim said, Brian, if, if I got some money on the sidelines, I'm thinking about investing in Bitcoin, my question would be, number one, are you going to play it on a value basis or are you going to play it on a momentum basis? If you are going to play the market on momentum, then you are going to play the resolution of this range if it breaks higher and hopefully you can see that a big fat W will come in here if we close up here, right? Can you see the W? Mm -hmm. And really my advice for investors is don't go and assume that this thing's going to break out. Just let it break out. And what is it? It's the difference of like 50 bucks. So what? If this thing's going to $5,000 a coin, what's 50 bucks? Twenty. You know, like a year or two from now, you're going to think about it. My advice to Joe Sixpack is let this resolve. Let the W come in, and if you want to just buy on a stop, great, buy on a stop. But my feeling is, I got a funny feeling, there's, that we're not done with the shenanigans. Um, at the same time, if that person came and said, well, Brian, no, really, I like value. I want to buy where I think, you know, I, you know, I've got a pretty good shot at buying the floor. I would have to simply draw my fibs off of the weekly price chart, and here is my reload zone. And what a coincidence, that's right off of this big honking trend line we drew all the way back to there. Bang, 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 right? So, I, you know, people ask me, Brian, you know, I'm thinking about buying some Bitcoins, where should I buy it? And my advice is, not here. Sorry. Now, if you want to play the market on momentum, Great, you can chase this. I don't mind that, but if you're going to do that, then you've got to play the rules of the game. And when we hit upside objectives, I sure hope you're going to be taking profits. So what does that mean that Brian's doing in the short term? Well, as everybody knows who's watching this, we've taken, and, and a full disclosure since day one, we've taken a, basically one coin and turned it into seven Bitcoins. And so the question ultimately here is, do I have Bitcoin long risk or do I have Bitcoin short risk now? I actually have quite a bit of Bitcoin long risk. Now, I'm long all these cryptos. It's not like I can go and liquidate them. So what is a prudent strategy to try and hedge part of this portfolio? And really one could argue, and I, I've set it up here, I don't know whether the reporting has come in yet, but you know, I could actually argue that I could actually run like a 10% hedge you know, maybe like uh, seven tenths of a Bitcoin at ten times leverage futures contracts, which would give me 
seven bitcoins of net short exposure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah. technically, I could completely hedge my portfolio with a futures position if I thought Bitcoin was going to crap out and just lock in some of these prices. As it is right now, I've uh, and really what you have to understand is that as a trader, I run trading plans. That's what I do. At no time should I ever inject my opinion into my actual trades. The trades I take should be off of the trading plan and really I judge how good or bad of a trader I am by how well I follow my plan. That's actually the key to success in this game. So, what I find, and this happens a lot in this world, is that trades that often set up in trading plans are often extremely unpopular. <laughs> because basically what's happened is price has rallied into resistance, and of course the community wants the market to go through resistance and keep going, but I have to short against highs. And then conversely, when markets crap out and they just tank down, what am I doing a lot of the time in these down markets on these altcoins? I'm in there buying. And it's tough to do. It's very, very hard to do because I have a lot of people like Alex who's just sitting there totally tuning me out, picking his uh, nails with his teeth, who basically <laughs> doesn't, doesn't believe me and thinks my opinion's full of shit. Well, you know, really, I don't care whether my opinion's full of shit. All I'm doing is following my trading plan, and I just got to live by the plan. So why would Brian consider having a short on? Other than the hedge, if we actually look at price action, you know, this is a four-hour Bitcoin chart, we see a high end of a range and a low end of a range, and lo and behold, there is our reload zone. Right, basically shorting against the high, with a tar, uh, you know, a, an expectation of a test of the low end of the range, and you know we know that markets range about how often versus trending. Who knows the magic answer? It's like eighty twenty. Right. So the point here is, technically speaking, eighty percent. Let's maybe even say seventy percent of the time, the market will fail at the top end of this range and have to go back down to the bottom end of the range. And you can see that it did exactly that here. And then, lo and behold, look, we did it again. We rallied off of the V bottom. And when I'm looking at trading tops or bottoms, and, and let's take the bottom scenario, what letter of the alphabet am I looking for? The W. That's right. So we have a V here. We don't have a W, which leads me to believe that at some point, and we've also left, look at the size of this honking tail here. Okay. We've also left a pretty darn big tail that should be eaten here. Now, I'm not saying it's going to, I'm not saying, that, you know, there is no guarantees in the market. If anybody actually comes to you and says, you know, I know exactly what's going to happen. They're full of horseshit, right? All we're doing is playing a game of statistics. And this is actually, in my setup language, this is what I call a reload zone within a reload zone. So ironically enough, I'm almost compelled. I have to take this trade. I wouldn't be a good mentor for my students if I didn't take this trade because this setup is in my trading plan. So, as a result, and actually what's interesting is um, OKCoin okay, Futures, a little bit different price action. They actually listed a new contract, uh, the June Futures contract, so I don't have that on that chart. But anyway, it did get up into this zone, and I hit it. Um, over the course of this period, price has been jumping all over the place, right? Um, I hit, you know, keep in mind the futures contracts are a little bit differently. If you want to see the futures, come onto the site. You know, I'm more than happy to, you know, all of my, uh, in fact, on the site, right, what I do on a daily basis is I po post uh, basically the updates of exactly what the trade positions are doing, uh, my thoughts on Bitcoin, broad, broader stock market, just every single day, they're just sitting there for you. Um, as well, of course, you know, in the members uh, lounge, uh, we have tons and tons of people in here constantly posting. You can see uh, JC went and posted the, uh, the the link to the show here. <laughs> um, 
And I should give a, a shout out. I'm looking to, out, JC. Yeah, actually, yeah, we should have JC back on the show. I don't know where he is, but anyway, you can see people are uh, chit chatting away here on the site. So the point of the matter here, and actually today in the blog today, I did like a half an hour video on this this uh, formation, what I see happening here, um, and the trade. Um, I actually, you know, on this dump, I actually had two contracts going short here. On this dump, I squared one, so I only have one contract short right now. But, you know, there's that M that I told you about before, Alex, right? There it is. Really, until this M is busted, I have to, every time the market dips up into here, I have to consider shorting. Um, as soon as this M is broken, and what's interesting is that M being broken, can you see the M right up in here on the weekly charts there? Right? If we can clear up here, and this is what I said to the audience earlier, for anybody who's thinking about investing in Bitcoins and you want to try and play the momentum trade right now, just let the W come in. Don't fight this fight. You're not big enough to win this fight. Let the market fight this fight. Let it be done with. Let the market break out. Give the market the 20, 30, 40 bucks here it needs to break out, and then get your butt in there. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. So. Uh, yeah. Long and short of it here is, yes, I do still have a small short position on. Um, and according to trading ranges, until we break out through the top end of this range here, uh, I, I, I just can't be too bullish. And actually, I'm a little bit concerned about how overtly bullish everyone is. And uh-oh, <laughs> here's Willie getting nice and stupid. Uh-oh. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. Okay, so does that, uh, Alex? What do you think? Did I give the uh, my? Uh, do you have a clear idea of what I'm thinking in Bitcoin right now? Oh yeah, like, and I think uh, the one thing that summarizes it best is uh, actually a quote that I have from a, a fantastic crypto trader in the space: "Is um, don't worry about the first ten percent or the last ten percent. Just be happy with that eighty in the middle." Totally, like, totally. I mean, that's basically our bread and butter. The interesting thing, and I think I said this on the weekly chart, right? If we can break out through this range, I very easily expect to come on in, Nicole, um, a rally up into, you know, at the very least, a test of the reload zone up here. You know, this is like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Let the let the whales, the arrogance, the whoever's fight this fight. Let them win this fight, and then we'll go and grab 200, 300 bucks here. That's the way I would, you know, uh, momentum-wise trading. But I need to caution people. I'm not buying this right here. In fact, I got a little short on, right? And I, you know, people who come to me in the public and say, Brian, you know, I'm a value person. I want to work, you know, a nice little bid. Where would I be buying? You can see these numbers, right? And you know Bitcoin is notorious for its fuck you moves. Excuse my friend. Mm. Right? This and the irony of it all is this might happen, and I've seen this on the goddamn markets, it's driving me crazy. This move down into this zone and then back up here might happen in like ten minutes. <laughs> right? That's so and true. <laughs> you missed the window, it's gone. Yeah. So I, I have a lot of people that I've just said, you know what, just if you want to invest in Bitcoin, right? If if we're gonna, you know, blast up here, right? You could chase it if you want, but really, you know, just sprinkle a whole bunch of bids in here. And if those bids get filled, great, you know, and sprinkle them. Doesn't need to be all at one level. Just sprinkle them a little bit here, a little bit there, and you know, if we get that little fu move, great, you get some. So, all right, that's my thoughts on Bitcoin right now. Perfect. Um. Well, I think we need to do some fan service, and we got to go to our wonderful wheel. Uh, yeah. so wheel well of cryptos. And 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 the audience, if you want to give feedback and stuff, uh, you know, I didn't actually get to indicator analysis. I apologize, uh, but uh, you know, just let me know if if I'm I'm heading down the direction that you guys want me to be talking about here on Bitcoin. Okay, uh, and aside your bull bear, right? Uh, um, that's different. Okay. So uh, we had a list of coins that were submitted. Um, we weeded out a few names here, right? Because there were some that were just, you know, kind of marginal. Um, but I put them on the wheel. Um, so you know, we're just going to let the wheel decide who gets uh, the attention tonight. X nice. Cool beans. 
XCP. Counterparty. Okay. This, um, this has been a lot of fun uh, trading this one. Uh, it's done some crazy little spikes up, and it's got lots of room to go. You want to go on Poloniex. Uh, it's got decent history on Bitter, but Poloniex is where the mar or where the uh, Woo. Where the action at? Yeah. All right. Well, you know, the interesting thing, guys, is now that we've been doing this, I guess, for about a year, I think almost every single one of you is going to know I know exactly where Brian's going to say I should have bought this thing. Mm hmm. Not today. <laughs> Not today. Right. Well, you know, the. the I suppose uh, show 26 would be a year, would it not? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess think so. so, yeah. So uh, we're going to have to look back a little bit in hindsight here. Uh, but, you know, what I want you guys to do is sort of transfer yourself back to remember what crypto was like back in December, January, when, you know, everybody was obsessed with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin in the... Uh, in the Alts are dead. Right? Um, <laughs> and... And then how the alts sort of started to clean themselves up. And this is such a fantastic story of seasonality. Um, I actually think, and this is my general feeling, I think there was actually some sort of big buy program that came into the market there at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. uh, right across crypto. And I, and I really don't even think they even really cared. I think that just the buy program just came in and said, just buy, keep buying. You know, the, these buy programs, they they work in incredible, like these are huge algos that operate. You don't even see them operating. They know exactly what size to place orders, and they just lifted the market. I just felt it. It was just quite and remarkable to watch. There was definitely uh, a lot of money flowing into to yeah. a lot of different markets. So, you know, it had to be coming from somewhere. It seemed like it was fairly coordinated. It all happened at once, that's for sure. Yeah, and I also think, too, that the <laughs> fact that Bitcoin actually finished last year positive, and I don't think a lot of people took that into account. Like, if you actually, because there's a lot of fund managers around the world that just simply go asset by asset by asset, and they just want to have their money invested in whatever was up the previous year. And everything was down. Stocks were down. Commodities were down. But Bitcoin showed like a 20% increase year to date. So I think that caught a lot of people's attention. Um, so, you know, long and short of it here, we can see the very well-defined W that came in. And this was what's really cool, guys, is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, but, you know, traders, there's no way I could get in at the levels. And, you, know, you have to be, like, lightning fast. I don't think that's true. You know, you could, if, if you're trading, I mean, look at this W here. I didn't even see this, right? Went down, up, down. So you could have watched this level like a hawk right there, doink, right? Could have started accumulating. You see the breakout there. Um, I don't know whether we got a, a, a classic fib pullback here. Oh, look at that. Oh, Mountain Man even got his fill. So you could have just been working stink bids here at Mountain Man's level. Uh, 61.8 fib, right? Could have gone lots of this is a daily chart, so it's not like there was any big hurry. Uh, if you didn't want to play fibs, you could have uh, focused in on this little range right here. You see how the markets, you know, made a new low, rallied up, then made a new low. So this has been this range wiped out, rallied up, came back down, did not make a new low, and then started to turn up. So you could make an argument if you want to play little double bottoms and double bottoms. We have this double bottom. Confirmed here, rallied up, pulled back into reload zone. Another little W coming in here. Uh, Willie starting to turn up nicely. It'd be interesting to see what MACD looked like here. Uh, going positive, nothing really stunning. You can see money flows. Look at the nice little W and the OBV coming in there. So technically speaking, lots of reasons to get super excited through here. Moving average crossovers, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, this is, uh, what is that, 1629, so we'll call that 163, so what's that, 30, uh, 32, 33, somewhere in that area should be able to get some off, half on a double, and that level was hit right here. So even as of this point right there, you would be in a free position on the trade. Not bad. Let's see, did it go much further? Oh, look at that. Woo, wow, this thing really went far. Well, you could have gotten a second W off, second double off. Uh, so what do we got here? 6,000-ish, somewhere up in that area. There's another double. Uh, did we get another double out of this? Oh, not quite. So two doubles, 200% return. 
Um, that's sort of the way I would be playing it right now if we went off at this level. That is, uh, what is that? That's uh, 0.002 or 21, so 40 is one double. Uh, that was hit here, and 80 is another double, which was also a uh, hit. So even off of either level, uh, you got off two doubles, 200% return, and you still got free coins to go. Uh, what do you do now, though? Julian's always like, well, you know, that's about the past, Brian. Tell me about the future. So uh, we uh, take a fib off of the high, going back down. Can you see how they actually brought it right back into a reload zone here? Can you see that? Um, yep. Actually, yeah, I played this one really well where I, I bought around, I think it was 180,000 Satoshis. I came in for breakfast and saw it was 80, uh, 800,000, so I sold. Came back at lunch, it was 400, so I bought back, and then when I came in for dinner, checked the market one last time, it was at 60. <laughs> so it was like, oh, that's buy, this, sell, buy. Yeah, it was, it was that great. was this one day right here? Uh, yep, yeah, I believe that was the candle. Yeah. That's interesting, so extreme volatility even through the day, eh? Oh, yeah, and you can see that even just recently here. It just had, like, a, a rocket up uh, 80K, and I think it's because, like, if, if you look at this more in a macro sense, like a longer term, like, this thing still has a long way to go. Like, you're, you're looking at that candle, yeah. Hmm, yeah, yeah, a long way. But this is only on Poloniex. If you look on Bitter, I think it's got a, a little bit more, too, but... That that last peak was uh, when Overstock was, I think, uh, really hyping it up, and they were talking about putting their stock on it. So maybe that's part of the news we're going to be hearing soon. I don't know. Okay. Well, um, you know, I think you can see that the pros got off their positions, and now they have free positions, right? For sure. That's exactly what I think's happened here. You know, like basically, any uh, the smart money is now all in free coins. I also see, too, here, they left one hell of a wick, you know, kind of like what you're saying, this insane volatility. And I get the feeling, uh, what, what do we call these two candles when you see a really big up candle with a close right up, not much of a wick, and then open right up near there, not much of a wick, and then boom, right back down. What do we call that? Remember? Uh, railroad tracks. That's right. So not a good sign. Right? We got now a major brick wall right here. Uh, yeah. At the same time, too, we also have uh, momentum trailing off here. And really, the way I would say it is you got to see the buyers come back here, right? So the buyers got to step up. Um, I, I, you know, if I, if I was, uh, you know, if this is my money, I, I can't buy it. Just can't buy it. It's too late. Um, you got to be on your free position. And then if they just keep working it up higher, great, you know, wonderful. Uh, you know, keep selling half on the doubles as they keep working higher. On the short-term basis, you know, if you're Mr. Slick day trader kind of idea like Alex, uh, uh, super slick, I suppose, you know, if you started getting bottoming action off of the, uh, you know, this range because this was into a bit of a reload zone here, and we could all probably also say there, you might get a nice rally back up into this area. Um, interesting to see, you know, you got this wick going right up to mountain man level there. That wick might have to get eaten right there. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I can't trade this. Uh, yeah, interesting. But, uh, <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. Okay. Uh, well, I do know that, yeah, Dallas, you wanted to do one for Greg. What was that one that you wanted oh, to do? Oh, uh, Decred. DC. Yeah. That's a pretty popular one, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, right. we get a lot of requests for that one. And uh, that makes Greg nice and happy. Uh, okay, so where are we going to be? Yo, Ben? <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, this um, is... Looks like a relatively, uh, you know, I, is there a backstory here? You want to tell the audience a backstory? Yeah, sure. Okay, so Decred is uh, a brand new algorithm. It's a bunch of developers from Bitcoin Suite, which is kind of like, um, I think, a wallet for Bitcoin. Um, they got a crap load of funding. They actually did not a crowd sale. They did an airdrop. So if you signed up and you kind of prove that you had a, uh, you signed up with a with a decent media presence or a decent like a online persona, so you weren't just like signing up a thousand times, um, you would have gotten it was 280 coins. Well, at the when the network first launched, those 280 coins were worth about I think it was like half a bitcoin or something, 
and now at the peak here, it's worth over two bitcoins. So where Ethereum was actually like, hey, can we get some money? These guys are just like, yeah, can, here, take some, take some free coins, participate in the network. So one thing that they're doing that's pretty uh, uh, revolutionary is it's a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake. So and it's um, uh, there's a dev fund that's actually paid out, but uh, they are using the proof of stakers are actually voting on every block that the proof of workers are producing. So in that way, they can actually um, like invalidate blocks. So where you have Bitcoin right now is effectively doing an election, trying to decide if they want bigger blocks or not. The stakers can actually kind of have a vote, like the people who own the currency have a vote in it too. So it's a real cool like revolution in, um, uh, I guess, politics in terms of crypto. So. Sure. Could avoid that situation where the miners have all the control over the network, basically. Exactly, yeah. So if they want, they can choose to invalidate all the blocks that are smaller because they want something bigger. And the the voters, too, can also vote on other things, I believe. So uh, And it's using a fairly efficient algorithm, which some people will debate. How, uh, how many coins are out? It's a pretty low number. I think it's going to be 21 million in total, but it's producing, I think... Uh, 50 every five minutes. Uh, you'll have to maybe pull that tab over, but it's only like 200k right now. It's it's super low. Okay. Uh, I'd be curious as to why this candle had to go all the way down here. Uh, that was the launch, so like that's why it's at zero. So like if you want the full history, you got to go to Blue Trade. That's where like they had the first market. But um. Good. All right. <laughs> you have the same reaction when we first talked about it. The problem is, in half this uh, game, I hope you guys appreciate, you know, like when I was a broker, people would come to me with stock ideas all the time, right? And nine times out of ten, I just have to say, you know, I mean, good luck with your story, um, you know, but I, I, uh, I'll, I'm going to just sit this one out if you don't mind. <laughs> Um, I don't like this consolidation in the way that it's failed here. Uh, it's a little disturbing. Um, I think, you know, over the short term we could actually probe a bit lower. You can see she's trying to carve out um, a bit of a reversal here. In fact, there's a guy I used to trade with who actually, this is actually a trading technique called Doji Gap. So if everybody wants to write this down, here's your uh, freebie for the week. If you ever see the market doji, is it, do, you, do you guys see how this is a doji? Maybe yes, maybe no. Can you mm -hmm. guys see me? I don't know whether you can see this or not. Rob's gone to sure the bathroom. Sure can. <laughs> All right, so uh, doji, and then the next bar, it gaps higher. And really what we want to do is see this day finish, and you'll actually get a buy signal if it can tick up one tick up through this bar's high. Now, if this bar blasts up here, right, and then leaves a wick, you know, we may open up the next candle and then never go up and take out that high. So you can't chase it here. You've got to let this candle finish. And then technically, if indeed we do that, what is this three-bar uh, candlestick pattern called? I have no idea. Can you not hear me? Oh, there you are. You're back now. Yep. I was this here before. Is, uh, this is a fractal, right? Um, and uh, the fractal will also get a buy signal one tick above this high. The gap here leaves me a little bit concerned. And is this the same on that uh, other exchange? I don't know. Is this a Bitrex issue? I don't know. You know, what, what's this sort of, you know, this is almost the same as Bitcoin in that, you know, if somebody was like, Brian, you know, I really think this thing's going to go up. I think it's a great idea. I would say, you know, let the market tell you that it's a great idea. And the first thing that we want to see is let's stop making M's and let's start making a W. Um, I don't like the fact that we've gone through this low and then this low, and then you notice how price really consolidated off of that and failed. Um, if anything, you know, and I had the one-hour chart up when I looked at it earlier, 
what I think you might see here, and yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, probably because we're talking about it here, but, you know, you're going to get a sort of a little buy on the rumor kind of idea. Um, and if anything, I could probably see a nice little technical bounce uh, heading back up into this area, um, which would just do nothing more than bring us down uh, back to the point of kissing the underside of this trend line. And, you know, so for those that are trading this, I don't think you can buy this. That sucks. You could do like a little reload zone, right, off of uh, this range and maybe work your bid at that gap uh, for traders, right? Um, uh, actually, I did a trade on Jumbox, exactly the same, you know, where basically I just worked my bid right down at the gap off the daily chart, got my fill, and then it cranked higher. That was an awesome trade. Uh, mm -hmm. Off of the one hour chart, I don't know, this is getting, you're trying to like sort of, you know, uh, thread a needle here. Can you see how this is kind of like a head and shoulders here? So if you're lucky, this is a head and shoulders, you get your stink bid fill here at the uh, RLZ at these gaps and, away, and you wrap, take the trade up to here. Probably produce a nice little risk reward trade, not a bad idea. Um, not my flavor, again, as I said, off the daily charts, a little suspect. If I was going to work a bid, um, I think I'm going to concentrate. And, you know, I like, I like when uh, the community is positive of coins. It just doesn't necessarily mean that I have to buy or pay the current price. So I definitely am interested in this, but I think I'm going to be working my bids. And ideally, actually, I'd like to see this tail revisited here. And that's 0 .002. That's the area. If I was going to be a buyer, maybe even to see if this low here, this uh, tail of this uh, candle here is eaten, I might take a shot down in that area there. Um, do like the idea. There's a bit of a bull divergence trying to form, and Willie is getting stupid. But you can see uh, the buyers aren't coming back here in earnest. Um, so if anything, for me, um, I, I would just, you know, let's let's let this thing bottom um, a bit more and uh, and show me a little more evidence of an actual technical bottom or a trade location. Give me this juicy trade location. Well, if you see on my screen here, I got Greg's chart that he shared. I think it was uh, late yesterday, so some of the candles haven't printed yet. But uh, he was calling kind of for lower areas here. He wanted to buy just below uh, or right around forty or four hundred thousand. Um, but he what, taken, what time frame is that? Uh, this is the one day, I believe. No. Uh, 720. 7.20. How long is that? <laughs> uh, That's hours. Six hours? 12, 12 hours? 12 hours. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I turned the hourly. Half a day. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and he has, what's, what's that little note? It's that blue line. I like his green box there. Oh, and that's a 200% extension too, isn't it? Yeah. And that's yes. to eat this uh, this tail right down in here. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like the idea of this tail being eaten here. Yeah, and he's got the same sort of um, kind of um, repeating pattern here, drawn. So it's like there are zero overlap. Uh, the A B C D fractal pattern. Um, that's a bearish harmonic, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I've, uh, I've I've kind of lost a lot of my um, my terminology with the just the, the lack of trading. I've been trading mostly, I think, on fundamentals recently. It was just kind of pop into a couple of my rooms. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, what's going on today? Oh, this looks alright. And then I see a couple charts that I kind of like. I don't know why I like them, but I guess I just do. And then uh, yeah, do a little buy, a little sell. Um, I am I am recording uh, like I'm writing down what I'm seeing or I'm writing down. Um, the, uh, my trades and why I felt I needed to buy them. So I think that's one improvement I've definitely gained from your course, Brian, but also to just setting orders because um, I've had this argument with a couple guys, I guess, uh, talking about the sell half on a double thing. Um, it's like sometimes you just can't watch the charts all day. Like they talk about, oh, I like to set an alarm and then I'll, I'll sell based on what it does after it has set an alarm. It's like, well, what happens if you're in the hospital? Like uh, you have nothing working. Like your your portfolio can do whatever the hell it it, it wants to. So uh, mm -hmm. those are, I think, the principles that are really good. The vegetables, as you called them, um, eating uh, your vegetables. That's yeah. Right. So that yeah, that will. I, 
I think uh, you know working with a trading plan. Um, if you're, you know, and keep in mind, if there are guys that are, you know, oh, I got levels set and, and I'm watching the screen 24-7, well, odds are they are working with a plan, whether they've actually articulated it down to put it down on paper. I'm sure they have very specific reasons that they take trades. Um, I like the idea for people that are relatively new or even somebody that... You know, Brian, I'm a lawyer. I'm an accountant. I'm a, I'm a woodworker, right? Um, I don't want to watch this stuff 24-7, but I see you having fun in crypto, and I want to have some fun too. This is a, this is a relatively the little old lady approach kind of idea to uh, buying uh, a chunk of an asset, not worrying about you know, the underlying risk because you're not taking too much risk on the buy, and then every time it doubles, letting the market have half the position. That's you know that's actually a strategy that I worked as a broker. It's a fantastic strategy for like people who are doctors, lawyers, accountants, woodworkers. That hey, I've got a life. I want my money to grow, but I don't want to have to watch it 24/7, and I don't want to have to really stress over it. So, um, but you know, it's not going to appeal to everybody. And somebody who has the ability to sit in front of a screen. And, and get up at 2, 3 in the morning. The one thing I really don't like about Bitcoin is uh, these uh, almost invariably Bitcoin has its moves when I'm in La La Land. And I hate getting up and being woken up in the middle of the night. It sucks. <laughs> you know, the oh, irony of uh, being like a crude oil pit trader is that your business was from 6.30 in the morning till 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and Monday to Friday, and you didn't have to worry about any other time of day. <laughs> If our viewers want to learn more about developing a trading plan, where should they go, Brian? Um, you know, I think a great resource is these shows. Um, and I have a lot of site people that I said, you know, the very first thing they have to do is come and watch every single Coinigy show because it sort of gets them thinking the right direction. What about um, the rationalinvestor.co? What do you offer that can help people with their trading plans? Well, we do have a school, and by all means, if people are interested, um, we'll, I think we'll open up sort of pre-registration for the fall program uh, over the next month or so. Uh, we have a summer program, but, man, I can't believe the overwhelming response. It, like, sold out, like, weeks ago, and it doesn't even start for a month. Um, I will see if I can squeeze in a raffle uh, winner here. This uh, I guess maybe we'll do it. We'll try and do the raffle next show because I do like to. Uh, in fact, our raffle winner I should probably bring him on. Last week, time was David Ottinger. I don't know whether you remember him or not. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic guy. Wrote his exam. Got ninety-two percent, I think, on his final. Um, and actually, I was going to give a shout out to him. You know, a, a few of the ideas that he came up with uh, during the uh, fundamental analysis, kind of like uh, Alex has been. Um, I liked the idea so much, I went and bought the companies. <laughs> you remember? You remember that commercial from back in the '80s, the uh, Remington? Do you, remember, do you remember that guy used to go, I like the shaver so much, I bought the company. <laughs> I do remember those. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that guy? Barely. So. Yeah. Um, so, and the great part about it is that's the awesome part about our community. I mean, literally, our, our little community is, is it's one of these one plus one equals three. I can wake up in the morning, and I can have from five different directions. People are like, hey, Brian, take a look at this. Hey, did you see that? Do you see what's going on? Hey, did you see that breakout? Did you see that setup? Do you see that setup? Oh, it's just beautiful. Uh, I mean, this is it's a, it's a work of art. So, you know, by all means, uh, I would say step one, it's 30 bucks a month. You know, obviously it means that you're going to make a commitment to, um, to trading alts and to making money from trading alts, right? You're not going to be able to just, you know, come in here with half a Bitcoin and expect to make a fortune. Um, yeah. what, uh, but, you know, those people that do come in and they manage uh, a book of assets, we do very, very well for them. And they're very, very happy people. Step one is just joining the site and and just getting yourself comfortable. And uh, step two, if you do want to take that next step in becoming a professional, um, you know, pour through all of our tutorials and videos on our site. We have a ton of different resources for people. Um, you know, just site members. And then if you do need a helping hand, 
and you do want to work with somebody, the big sales pitch of my educational programs is that basically I work one on one with you. Um, and um, and uh, you know the the feedback uh, I've gotten from students has been very very positive. So I think it's a win win all around for everyone. Great. I don't know whether that answers your question. Yes, absolutely. That's what I was trying to squeeze out of you, Brian. <laughs> so once again, check out the rationalinvestor.co for more about uh, your trading plans and how to navigate the uh, volatile but exciting crypto markets. Yeah, and the cool so, part about it is you can build a trading plan to your own personal specifications. If you're a risk taker, great, we can build a plan about being a risk taker. If you're not a risk taker, which I actually encourage people to start with, we can build a plan out of low risk. And that's the best part about this is, you know, you don't have to, you know, put yourself into really high anxiety situations while trading, right? Yeah. So and if you want to hear more from Alex Sturt, check out his show, um, Block Talk, for more uh, crypto-specific, less about the markets maybe, and a little bit more about uh, different cryptocurrencies and what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I just did an interview with uh, one of the core developers of Ethereum. Um, so yeah, you can search us up uh, Block Talk on uh, YouTube or just Block underscore Talk on Twitter. Um, it was a great interview. It actually kind of made me super bearish on Ethereum at that point because the guy, <laughs> he was way more about um, the technology they were proving rather than the value of his asset. He's like, yeah, if anything, I don't like it when it's so high because it needs a lot more eyes on us. So, <laughs> it gives a lot more that's insight that's into the, the R and D. That's the worst part about it is that at the top of the market, the public, you know, basically our viewers, right? They were all really excited about Ethereum, and I had a lot of people saying, oh, "I want to get in, I want to get in, I want to get in," and I just, man, that's tough. Again, a lot of what we have to do as technicians is is discipline ourselves to either take very unpopular positions according to our trading plan. Or have the discipline not to get sucked into the euphoria. Yeah. So, and also check out coinagy.com for your cryptocurrency trading needs. We offer trading and charting on um, close to 50 different exchanges right now. And we're adding more features and more integrations all the time. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.